I'm going to turn this into this in 27 minutes or less. Will I finish in time? Or will I have to hit the turbo button? You can create along with me or just relax and watch. I'm Gina Murrow, the 27 minute artist. X marks the spot for this round frame of a bell pepper. If drawing shapes makes you hesitate, follow this simple X method to get started. Here are the supplies you'll need. A sanded piece of pastel paper. I used a nine by seven, 400 grit UART paper. Soft pastels in bright red, medium purple, a medium dark green, a light olive green like chartreuse, and a soft peach, sort of putty colored. Okay, it's pepper time. Let's start this one with a green pastel pencil. I picked green, any kind of green, because it is the um, complementary color to the biggest color that I have in this, which is a red pepper. Think of X marks the spot, and we're just gonna make a real, just very lightly make an X, kind of a squat X. And what I'm gonna do with that X is I'm gonna use that to just sketch out where on the pepper I have angles. And rather than doing circles, I'm kind of making them appear. Let's see, this X is gonna mark that big spot. I'm making them in angular marks instead of circles. It just makes for a stronger painting. Helps me see the shapes. This one's gonna come down that other middle pepper, middle um, lobe. And then we're gonna put this out here. So is this an exact pepper? No. But the point of this pepper is to practice doing um, shapes and limited palette, which will just make your drawing stronger. That didn't quite go where I wanted it to. Make your drawing stronger and get you used to using your pastels. So there's my X. And then this one, there's a little bit of a line that comes here and makes a triangle. We're gonna draw in the end of the stem. The point is not to be exact. The point is to get used to using your tools. So relax. If your pepper is shaped a little different, peppers come in all shapes and sizes, and we're going to capitalize on that. Okay, and then I'm not gonna draw the windowsill. I could, and because it makes a nice dark, you know, interesting background, but I'm just gonna give it a horizon line. The point being that um, I don't need to practice the windowsill unless I just wanted to. Okay, that, oh, let's mark in a little bit of where some of our shading goes. I usually end up losing these shading marks. I mark them and then I forget about them. So use them if, as long as they're helpful to you. But if they're not helpful shapes, you can leave them off. Okay, enough with the pencil. Now I'm going to take, I chose this bluish purple for my shading that I'm gonna mix the pastels on the paper. And just using blocky marks and a light touch I'm going to mark in kind of where the shadows are. And this is when you want to squint. So I might even take my glasses off and do a little bit of squinting. Leaving this little spot open for the highlight. I can put this over, put the highlights over this dark color, but it is going to blend and mix in. So I'm doing it, I'm safe, preserving my whites. even though it's not exactly white. Trying to sort of stay within the lines, we can work with that by adding in the background. So don't worry too much if you go outside the lines. This is a very definitive dark spot. So let's get that in. Preserving my pails there. And then there's a little bit of a shadow 
here. Don't want to make it too dark, but I do want to put the shadow under the pepper. We'll go in and define that later. Get a little bit of the shadow on my stem. Okay, now glasses back on. Got to see what I'm doing. Now in this case, I chose, I'm going to choose to use the bright color. So usually you, a lot of times you'll work from dark to brights, then to lights. That's the order. Um, we're going to jump the cue just a little bit and get some of these bright reds in early on. Again, I'm still trying to kind of make my shapes more angular than what you would think with a pepper. Very lightly, we'll go down here. I don't want to, I don't want to do it with on the dark yet because it, it contaminates my piece, which then I have to wipe it off. Not a big deal. However, this will be easier to get it in this way. So I'm more or less sticking to the brighter parts of this pepper where the light is hitting it. It's such a pretty, it was a very delicious pepper too. I already ate it. This is an exercise you can do with anything that you have sitting in your fruit bowl um, or in your refrigerator. Just pull it out, try to make that a little bit more of a line there and, and draw it. It's good practice. Basic shapes are always good practice and you want to keep the shapes on the simple side. Okay, now we're gonna go with this bright red over the dark that we already put on there. Very lightly, again, still preserving my whites and roughly staying in line. I'm going to add some red on top of that, but I wanna go lightly because I want the dark to blend and darken that red for me. And you notice I'm not blending yet. I don't really want to if I can help it. Or I want to use another pastel to do the blending if I need to. Okay, seven minutes in. Good. Okay, wipe, wipe it clean. Now I'm gonna go back with this purple, just a little bit, purple blue and just very lightly touch up some of the darker spots that kind of got lost. I have red on my hands and it is affecting my colors. One thing you can pay attention to is what you put under your paper. I did not remember to put paper under this and you can kind of see it in the unevenness of the lines. If I had put two or three pads of two or three pages of paper, just drawing paper works, it would make it a little smoother. I'm not going to worry about it though. Okay, put the blue down, cleaning it off. Clean off your fingers. Okay, and choose this really light green. This is a Celon or what's that color that was so popular in the 60s. And I'm going to brighten the areas that are near the light with this color. And it will read as a lighter red that way. Keep it clean. See how it does? It just adds a little bit of lightness. Even though the color I see in the picture is more of a purpley pink, that's not, I tried it and it's just not working very well for reading as light on a red pepper. So I took the complement, made it super light with plenty of white mixed in it. And I'm adding that instead along the areas that are going to be lighter. And what that does is that it just kind of vibrates. The two colors are complements of each other, red and green. And it just makes the pepper look like it's healthy. And I'm doing this a little more firm so that you can see the mixtures of the colors. And I go ahead and let it go in that blue too. 
So I don't want any here. I do want a little bit here. One thing you can do is keep your palette really limited. Now I had a struggle with that uh, on picking out the palette for this video. I just, I see a lot more color in this painting and or in this photo and I really wanted to use it. But the point is to keep your palette limited. Now let's go to the darker green. This is still a warm green. I could have gone more cool and I, did, I chose not to. And using the edge of it, I'm going to add in some of those part of the, I don't know what you call that. It's at the base of the stem. Now right there, there should be some red. So let's go back and get some red. And this is actually a darker red than what I'm having here, but I'll fix that here in just a second. Put red all through there. Then take my blue purple and lightly tap that red so it tones down. Get rid of some of that white. Add in some shadow. Go back to the Celon color. Cerulean? No, that Cerulean's a blue. This is more of a Celadon. And a little bit right there to round out that part of the pepper. Okay. Now I'm seeing lots of white marks and they're getting they're bugging me. So we're going to take the purple and gently go there. I am going to use the side of my finger, partly because I can't get this sanded paper to accept the color evenly without a little bit of rubbing. This whole side of the pepper has some reflected light, but it's mostly in the shade. So we're, we need to get the shape and that form in. Don't overwork this. It doesn't have to be perfect. The point of this exercise is to practice doing this very thing. There we go. There we go. That's doing more what I wanted to do. But see, as I rub it too much, it begins to get a little muddy, so stop. <laughs> Stop. There's a light shape there. Try not to rub it too much. Just enough to get it moving the direction you want it to go. Very light touch. Use it to mix the colors. Mix, 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 mix. Okay. Okay, we're doing good on time. So I've lost this shadow here. And this one's getting a little bit bumpy, so we'll fix that. Switch back to the red. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a slight mark. It doesn't have to be uh, real definitive. You're thinking of shapes. You're not thinking, oh, that's the side of the pepper. I see a light shape that helps define the pepper right there. And another one here. And then this should be a little bit more rosy. Lights coming in this direction. But this is dimmed because it's in the back. So I'm going to take actually this darker green and see if I can't add some darkness to that without taking away 
from the pepper glow. Yeah, there we go. See? Just reads as a shadow. Now let's put some of the lights back in. Constantly, constantly cleaning. Because you get it all in your hands and then you get it on your pastels. Let's sharpen this edge right here. Using the edge of my little square piece. Yeah, I like that better. Now I need to darken the tip of him, the tip of his stem. With a shape that just resembles darkness. The dark shadow I'm seeing there. Tap it. See that dark I missed? Get it, get it, get it, get it. There we go. Now soften by just tapping it. Okay, I'm liking it better. I'm kind of making up my shadow. And I'm gonna to go to the darker green and put just a hair along the edges. This is just to make my shadow interesting. And then because it's the bread, there's going to be a little bit of reflection in the shadow. So I dab a little touch of red. And smooth it in because you, you wouldn't see it rough. Okay. But I want to make sure that the bottom of my pepper doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. Maybe use a little bit of my... So it's just a tiny bit of that celadon so we can come around. I see a little bit of light reflection here. It's lighter than what I'm just now putting in, but I'm going to smooth it in. It just helps you find the pepper and the shadow and the shape. Now all this is still feeling pretty fresh, so I'm going to leave that. And one thing I was doing when I was working on this is I kept putting white up here and it would or even light blue, and it just didn't work. So I found that this, the, um, this green, this 1960s popular green, actually did a better job of looking like light on the pepper. And then we're going to take a peach and we're going to lighten it more. So what I'm trying to do right now is get that light shape onto the pepper, changing it slightly from the photograph because my pepper didn't get drawn exactly like the photograph. So I'm trying to make it look like the shape, like what the light would be falling on the shape. So I'm rubbing a little harder at this point. Squint at it. <laughs> a little bit right here. And there's quite a bit right there. And there's a mark here. And you're like, Gina, that's just not, it's not as light as what I see in the picture. Nope, it's not. I'm taking some artistic license. This has gotten a little bit too, too pronounced. So let's soften that. There we go. Now I'm going to take this peach. This, you can see it next to the white, see the difference? So I'm gonna take this fleshy colored, it's kind of the color of stucco, and just add a few highlights. And see how it looks white against all this, or almost white? But it doesn't stick out so far that it disrupts the picture. If I put white on there, it would just disrupt it. I tried. I tried. That's why I know that. When you're doing limited palettes and when you're, when you're trying to sh make the shape and the form to bend, you need um, a dark, medium, and light at least, a minimum. Of, but you don't want to jump too far with that light. Um, even if what you're seeing is very bright, unless if this is too dark, it's not going to read right. It's too big of a jump. I'm really liking the pepper. Let's see. Oh, 
that had some dirt on it and it actually worked. So I'm going to leave it taking a point. I'm just going to hit a highlight um, just to help your eye find the form. You can tap it if it gets too dark or too bright. Okay, now let's put in a little bit of a background. And I picked up this little tiny piece. Let me wipe my hands clean. This little tiny piece of kind of a blue green to see if that couldn't give me a little more of a shadow. It's so small. Pastels are expensive, so I hang on to them as long as I can. So now I'm de deviating from the picture here. You could do any color you wanted. I made sure there was some green in the background uh, color because I want it to vibrate against the red. If, if I'd been doing a banana, a yellow banana, I might do a purple background because that's the complement. And it doesn't have to be straight complement. It can just have a hint of its complement. So once I get some of this color in, Sorry, I drew such a small piece. It's almost too small. I'm going to make a table. And then since this is just practice, we're going to, we're, we're just going to kind of put a little bit of a background to, to say, oh, this is a table. I'm not going to worry about it too definitively. So here's white, so you can see We'll use that to represent our window. And you can see how the white would have been too much around the, if it had been on the pepper. But it makes kind of a nice white kitchen window look. My grandma used to have lace curtains in her window. It would have resembled that. So that brings back happy memories. Okay, we got five minutes to go. I better move it along here. Okay, so once you get the background in, you can carve it around your pepper a little bit better. And then this is where we're gonna worry a little bit about lost and found lines. The, um, I don't want the light, I want the dark. Use my sliver of dark green. I don't need it too definitive back here because this is in the shadows. So I'm going to tap it with my finger, maybe smooth it just a little bit because the light here, I want these sharp, but this one I'm not, I don't want this as sharp. Mixing in my colors a little bit. And I've lost my shadow. So we just put it back in. That simple. Let's see if I can make it pepper shaped. It would be the shape of your shadows and the color of your shadows is important. Um, that's a smooth edge. So I want it smooth so it looks like a pepper, but I don't want it so sharp that it's distracting. So it's a bit of a push, push and pull to figure that one out. Um, let's put it back in our shade. Touch it up with the red. Now usually by this point, I'm getting a little restless in my picture and I start having a little trouble sticking with it. So if, you, if that's the case, you could take a break and walk away and come back to it. Don't have that luxury on 27 Minute Artists and I need to finish up. Ah. I'm going to assume that the shadow is actually going out of sight there. I think that'll look a little more real. There we go. And it's always really dark right at the base of the object. All right, we're just about done. This is a good practice for doing a loose and rounded shape. Definitely looks like a pepper. Uh, I think I would eat it. <laughs> it looks good to me. Mm -hmm.
Would you like to see a preview of our next episode? Keep watching. It's coming in just 40 seconds. But first, here are a few things you can do to help me keep the videos coming. Hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment while you're there. Share this video on your social media or share it with a friend. You can go to my website where you'll find more painting tips and you can buy the paintings I've created in these episodes. You can also see my fine art originals that took me way more than 27 minutes to create. Book me as a guest artist for your next gathering or convention. I do live painting demos and paint alongs for groups of every size, either in person or via Zoom. Next time on 27 Minute Artist, we'll paint the king of beasts using a rainbow of unexpected colors. Get ready to load up your paint palette. See you then. Thank you.